Hello and a very warm welcome to this special telecast on Rajya Sabha television. The linens are out, it can mean only one thing, it's summertime in peninsula India and today I am in Chennai, the capital of Tamil Nadu. I am in Chennai not to talk about the sea or the beach today, but I am here to talk about Dravidian politics. I am in the city to map the origins of the Dravidian movement and what led from a social movement to a political one. That's what I'm going to establish on this program. So join me on this journey. To better understand Dravidian politics as it is today, it is important to go back to the roots and go back to how the movement started. These three men were the initial proponents of the movement, Chettiar, Nair and Mudalyar. Post which of course, in 1944, the father of the movement took it forward. He is none other than E. V. Ramaswamy Periyar. The year was 1916, the date November 20th. It was on this day that the Justice Party of the South Indian Liberal Federation, as it was officially called, was formed. Social justice was the fundamental tenet of the movement. Education was a monopoly of the upper caste Brahmins. That is why 100 years back, the non-Brahmin movement was there. Even before non-Brahmin movement, when Britishers came, they issued circular that one community, this is a caste ridden society, and the privilege of the education and employment was the upper caste privilege, which is unknown, which is unparalleled in the whole of the world. That is why they want to feel, they want, they demanded justice. That is why their paper contained the name of justice, and the party was popularly known, even though the name of the party was South Indian Liberal Federation, etc. The party was known popularly as Justice Party. The party, formed in present-day Chennai, had three founders, Dr. T. M. Nair, P. Thigaria Chetiar, and Dr. C. Natesa Mudliar. Dr. T. Madhavan Nair was born on 15 January 1868 near Tirur in Palakkad, then Madras Presidency. His father was a district munsef at Tirur, known for his academic proficiency. Nair passed his matriculation exam a year in advance. He obtained his MD in 1896 in Europe and researched in ENT diseases. After returning to India in 1897, Nair associated himself with the Indian National Congress. He died of heart attack on 17 July 1919. Sapiti Tegaria Chetia was born in Egatur, Madras Presidency in Telugu speaking Devanga Chetty family on 27 April 1852. Chetia did his schooling in Chennai and graduated in law from Presidency College, Madras. Thereafter, he entered public life and served first as a member and then as first non-official president of the Corporation of Madras. He was also found a member and later president of South Indian Chambers of Commerce. He served as a first president of the Justice Party till his death on 28 April 1925. Chetiar was succeeded by Raja of Panagal as president of Justice Party. Born in Triplicane, Madras in 1875, C. Natesa Mudlayar was graduated as a doctor from Madras Medical College. In 1914, he started a hostel for non-Brahman students in Madras Presidency. 
This marked his entry in South Indian politics. Mudliar later brought together political opponents Tagaria Chettiar and Dr. T. M. Nair to form an organization to represent non Brahmins. Mudliar was expected to contest in 1937 elections to Legislative Assembly of Madras but died all of a sudden in February 1937 at the age of 62. After winning the first direct elections in 1920, the Justice Party formed a government in Madras Presidency. It was in power for 13 years and became an alternative to Indian National Congress in Madras. Early 1920s were also a time of a lot of discovery of several identities. And uh, you also had the RSS being formed in Nagpur around that time. In, this, in the South, the narrative was quite different, understandably, because it's always differed from the larger narrative. And here the narrative was cast, a largely a caste narrative. And it was against that backdrop that uh, the Madras uh, League was found, the Madras Dravidian League was found, which then later became what is popularly known the Self uh, Justice Party, but is the South India Liberation Federation. So this was essentially uh, to contest the concept of uh, an India which is one, but India which is many in terms of castes and communities. The Justice Party initiated several egalitarian moves like issuing a government order for public use of water from ponds and wells. Till then, certain sections like R.D. Dravidars were denied access to public water sources. The principles of Justice Party were simple, equality and fight against oppression. Social justice, gender justice, caste eradication and opportunities for all. This is basically and more than that we want to protect our Dravidian culture. Culture is a broader word and which includes the language imposition and, uh, uh, and appointing many of our rights, including the state rights. After it lost to the Congress in 1937 election, the Justice Party never recovered. Periyar E. V. Ramaswamy and his self-respect movement assumed its leadership. In 1944, Periyar transformed the Justice Party into the social organization Dravidar Kalagam and withdrew it from electoral politics. Erode Venkatapati Ramaswamy is regarded as father of the Dravidian movement. He was a social activist who started self-respect movement and Dravidar Kalagam. The nomenclature Dravidian was given by Periyar officially and Periyar is the uh, um, uh, father of the movement and everybody has accepted it. Even though the precursor, the pre-runner was the non-Brahmin movement. In fact, Periyar has three distinctions. He was the reason for the development of Congress Party in the South. He was the reason for the development of Communist movement in the South. And he is also the founder of the Dravidian movement. Ramaswamy was born on 17 September 1879 in Erod, then a part of Coimbatore district of Madras Presidency. He had an elder brother and two sisters. He later came to be known as Periyar, meaning respected one or elder in Tamil. Periyar means the great person. Periyar, that is the usage in Tamil. Even in Tirukkural, Periyarai Tonaihol, Periyarai Tonaihodal, Periyarai Padayamai, all these things. But in 1938, women, out of sheer respect and regard for Periyar, out of the selfless service for to abolish the women's serfdom, Penny and Adimeyanad, all these things, no other leader has gone and fought for the women's liberty to that extent as Periyar has gone and out of a uh, deep sense of gratitude the women's conference they joined together they gave this 
டைட்டில் ஆஃப் பெரியார் பெரியார் டூ லைக் டி எம் நாயர் பிஃபோர் ஹிம் வாஸ் பார்ட் ஆஃப் தி இந்தியன் நேஷனல் காங்கிரஸ் பட் ரிசைன் இன் நைன்டீன் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் வென் இ ஃபெல் த பார்ட்டி வாஸ் ஓன்லி சர்வ் இன் த பிராமின்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் நைன்டீன் டுவெண்ட்டி நைன் டு நைன்டீன் தேர்ட்டி டூ ராமஸ்வாமி டு ஓட் பிரிட்டிஷ் மலாயா யூரோப் அண்ட் ரஷ்யா இன் நைன்டீன் தேர்ட்டி நைன் ஹி பிகேம் ஹெட் ஆஃப் த ஜஸ்டிஸ் பார்ட்டி அண்ட் இன் நைன்டீன் ஃபார்ட்டி ஃபோர் ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபார்ம் இட் இன் டூ திராவிட Brahminocracy, Periyar was fed up with the uh, nationalism and all these things. He addressed a meeting at Salem in 1924. This was reported in Hindu centenary number. I am quoting with authority. 336 page. There, he has used the word, unless the caste question is settled before the Britishers leave this country, there will be Brahminocracy in this country. that made this organization it was a historic compulsion evi ramaswamy's first wife nagamai died in 1933 his second wife maniammai who he married in 1948 continued his social work after his death in 1973 now that you've seen a short biography of the father of the dravidian movement and you've understood how ev ramaswamy became periyar it is also important to understand who some of these stalwart leaders of dravidian politics are in 1949 ev ramaswamy's chief lieutenant anadurai established dravida monetra kalagam or dravida progressive federation after splitting with dravida kalagam though eventually they they sort of came to power only in 1967 and but about 10 12 years before that itself they had decided possibly to make this transition of course there were differences of opinion which we all know which is why the dmk uh, itself was born uh, uh, out of the dk or the dravida kalagam as it then existed so the the realization happened that there is only so much that a social movement can do and uh, the power to implement um, the the changes that are needed in society were simply not there with that of any social organization it needed a political base and that is why i think this transition happened over the years many disagreements arose between periyar and his followers In 1949 several followers led by C N Anadurai split from Dravida Kalagam after an aged Periyar appointed his younger wife Mani Ammai to act as a successor to lead the party until then E V K Sampath the nephew of Periyar was considered his political ally There are two strands in that one is that the DK was never interested in contesting elections when as another who was then in the dk always had this thing to contest elections because he felt to bring the social reforms into play one had to hold power so that was one the other one was the uh, another who was not very happy with uh, the dk's position of celebrating india's uh, independence day as a day of mourning and then came the final breakaway when uh, it was publicly made the reason that periyar married a person much younger to uh, him thereby which which kept another way out of the race to party succession anadurai was born on 15 september 1909 in kanchipuram then called konjivaram tamil nadu in a lower middle class family his father was a weaver his mother a temple servant they had an intercaste marriage anadurai was well known for his oratorical skills and was an acclaimed writer in tamil he scripted and acted in several plays some were later made into movies anadurai was first dravidian politician to use tamil cinema extensively for propaganda born in a middle class family he first worked as school teacher and then as a journalist He edited several political journals and enrolled as a member of Dravida Kalagam as an ardent follower of Periyar E V Ramaswamy he rose to became a prominent party member Panna was the I can say that he was the first uh, 
uh, reformer that is he wanted uh, Tamil renaissance to come back that is his contribution so he it, it was uh, he was he attracted youth he spoke in a language in which the youth which the youth can understand and he had a large number of followers coming Anadurai's interest in politics made him join the Justice Party in 1935. On 17 September 1949, he and four other leaders, known as Great Five Leaders, along with M. Karunanidhi, then an emerging screenwriter, announced the formation of DMK in Robinson Park in Royapuram in Chennai. Muttuvel Karunanidhi was born on 3rd June 1924 in Nagapattinam district, Madras Presidency. At birth, he was named as Dakshinamurti after a form of Shiva, but he later changed it into Karunanidhi, influenced by Dravidian and rationalist movements that were against the use of names of Brahmanical gods. Karunanidhi entered politics at the age of 14. Inspired by a speech of Justice Party leader and took part in anti Hindi agitations. Later, he founded Tamil Nadu Tamil Manavar Mandaram, the first student wing of Dravidian movement. He started a newspaper for students that grew into Murasuli, the DMK's official newspaper. At a time when there was a pro Congress sentiment across the country, how did the Dravidian ideology spread? This is one of the ways. Magazines, periodicals and newspapers carried the propaganda of Dravidian ideology, the Dravidian parties and Dravida Kalagam. This was one of the ways. The other ways, of course, was with, during the advent of the film fraternity. Several movie stars and members of the fraternity propagated the agenda of the Dravidian movement and Dravidian politics, not just that. Several leaders were great orators and that's how they spread the message. Also, barber shops and tea shops were used to spread the message of the Dravidian parties and their movement. It's always been the vision of many political leaders that uh, places of common interest where people, common people meet should become places of political activity. In the case of the Dravidian party and, the D and its offshoot, the DMK, it was the barber shop, for instance. It was the cycle repair shop, where it also used to hire cycles out. It was the tea stalls, where people congregate, where people get together. And there would be typically there would be one person who reads out a newspaper aloud, people sitting around them, and then hearing what he says, and then debating furiously about it. At the age of 33, Karnanidhi entered Tamil Nadu Assembly by winning Kulathali seat in 1957. He became DMK Treasurer in 1961 and Deputy Leader of Opposition in 1962. And when DMK came to power in 1967, he became the Minister for Public Works. He contributed much. See, he was a voracious speaker. He was a brilliant writer. He wrote uh, movies. I think Cine Field has an attraction among the people. So he used the film media to reach out to the people. His Parasakti was a wonderful piece of uh, his writing, which shows what is God and why God should be respected and what is happening in the name of God. Everything that one movie showed to the people. So he followed Anna's way, Piriyat's way, and he used different media. Before entering politics, Karnanidhi worked in Tamil film industry as screenwriter. He also contributed to Tamil literature, writing stories, plays, novels and multiple volume memoir. He was popularly known as Kalainar, meaning artist in Tamil. Murudur Gopalan Ramachandran, or MGR, was born in Kandy, Sri Lanka. In his early days, MGR was a devout Hindu and a devotee of Lord Murugan, and his mother's favourite god, Lord Sri Guruvayuruppan. 
After joining the DMK, he turned rationalist. In 1953, actor MGR joined the DMK, popularized the party flag and symbol, which stood for secession from India by showing it in his movies. The Dravidian movement and Dravidian parties are associated with the colors black and red. This is the flag of the Dravida Kalagam. This a flag of the DMK. And the AIA DMK is the same as the DMK with Annadurai on it. What is the significance of these two colors, black and red? We'll find out now. Significance of black and red is black is the suffering of the people and red is the sacrifice which we have to do to remove, to eliminate the suffering. That is the uh, significance of those colors. MGR was a cultural icon and one of the most influential actors of Tamil film industry. He was popularly known as Makkal Tilagam, meaning people's king. A philanthropist and a humanitarian, he became a DMK icon and is credited with the rise of the party. He was instrumental uh, in 1968 uh, when Anna passed away. The election of Kalinger as uh, the chief minister is completely attributed to Purochi Talevar, MGR. MGR with his uh, huge fan following uh, earlier period, even Anna is uh, uh, supposed to have said the entire victory of uh, DMK in 1967, if there is one person he has to attribute it to, it was to MGR. He clearly said that. Mr. M.G. Ramachandran started as started off in life as a sympathizer of the Congress party. And then he and Karnanadi were friends from the stage days and they would interact with each other. And uh, somehow uh, Mr. M.G. Ramachandran and Mr. Karnanadi started working together in films. Uh, Mr. Karnanadi was a script writer for a lot of Mr. M.G. Ramachandran's successful films. And uh, Mr. Ramachandran became part of the ideology of the DMK. And he was perhaps the most successful on-screen person for the DMK. And perhaps the most successful on-screen uh, political person. And Mr. Ramachandran was also essentially a very political person. He would know the pulse of the masses. He would know what works. DMK contested the state election in 1957. Karunanidhi won the Kulathalai seat, while other seniors like Veer Nidhinachesian lost from Salem. In 1967, DMK came to power in Madras province 18 years after its formation and 10 years after it first entered electoral politics. Thus began the Dravidian era in Madras province, today's Tamil Nadu. When Kalangar was chief minister, until then, for more than 200 years, there was not a single scheduled caste man who had become a judge in the Madras High Court. The first judge of the Madras High Court from a scheduled caste community was appointed by Kalanyar. Subsequently, he went to Supreme Court. Until then, Supreme Court did not have, for more than 250 years, Supreme Court did not have a scheduled caste man as a judge. This is the change. We had a chief secretary who was a Dalit. We had a police a DGP who was a Dalit. We empowered them. We gave them. There were the people, but still their numbers were less. So after we came, we saw to it that every community is given their due respect and due position we, without considering the community. All are equal. In 1969, the death of party founder C. N. Anadurai saw a power tussle between Karunanidhi and Nedun Chesian. Most of the MK's MLAs, including leaders like MGR favoured Karunanidhi as chief minister in preference to Nedun Chesian, the senior leader. To pacify Nedun Chesian, a party president's post was created for Karunanidhi. Nedun Chesian became general secretary. MGR was appointed treasurer of the party. M.G. Ramachandran was vital in popularizing party's ideology, but a political feud between M.G.R. and Karnanidhi broke out over the latter calling himself Mojib of Tamil Nadu. 
In 1972, MGR called for boycott of party's general council. When he went further, calling for a corruption probe, he was suspended from the general council. MGR then went on to form All India Anna Dravida Mune Prakaragam or AIDMK. Mr. Anadurai dies in office. So during the first term itself, Mr. Karnanadi becomes the chief minister towards the latter half. Then he calls for elections and he sweeps the polls. There is an overwhelming majority there. At that time, Mr. MGR, it, it also is a, is a uh, one, one attributes it to a clash of egos as to who contributed to the victory. That is one part of it. And uh, it is also said that Mr. M.G. Ramachandran wanted a ministerial portfolio. But uh, Mr. Karnanadi said either choose acting or politics. And that is another version to it. The third version was the difference of opinion over, over prohibition. But as people who are familiar with the way politics operates, it is not just that. There's something more than that. The DMK was growing as a party and it needed a counter. It needed a, uh, it needed, there were, there were also attempts to create another party. In 1977, DMK lost the assembly elections to MGR's AIA DMK and stayed out of power till 1989. After MGR's death, in 1987, the AIA-DMK split into two factions led by MGR's wife Janaki and J. Jayalalitha. Jayaraman Jayalalitha was born on 24th February 1948 in Belakote in Mandya district, then in Mysore state now Karnataka, in a Tamil Brahman Iyengar family. In 1982, Jayalitha became member of AIDMK. MGR's uh, uh, demise followed by ascendance of Amma, uh, Purochitalevi Amma, who of course uh, had a huge uh, base of her own when she came into the party, added to the depth of uh, fan following that MGR had and all the workers who attributed their presence in the party to MGR. Following MGR's death, his wife, activist and politician Janaki Ramachandran rose to party's leadership under the support of R.M. Virappan and 98 MLAs. She led the government for 24 days as the state's first women chief minister until the assembly was suspended in January 1988 and president's rule was imposed. The party began to crumble due to infighting and broke into two factions, one led by Janaki Ramachandran and other by J.J. Lalita. The 1989 assembly elections saw the DMK regain power after 12 years in opposition, with M. Karnanidhi returning as chief minister for the third time. Due to its split, the AI DMK suffered heavily in the elections, with the Janaki and Jayalalitha factions winning only 2 and 27 seats, respectively. After the rout, the two AIDMK factions merged under Jayalalitha's leadership. The DMK government was dismissed in 1990 by central government led by Prime Minister Chandrasekhar, an ally of AIADMK, on charges that constitutional machinery had broken down in the state. The AIADMK swept to power in the 1991 assembly election under the leadership of J. Jayalalitha, who became the second chief minister and the tenth chief minister of the state. Amma came back in 1991 and she since then ruled uh, over uh, five phases in Tamil Nadu and um, uh, Amma is supposed to have given a very a very welfareist twist to the entire Dravidian movement. She's, she'll be best known for her welfareist policies, uh, 29 Amma schemes which are running today, all attributable to her. So that brings us to the end of the first part of our two-part series on Dravidian politics. In our next episode, we'll take a look at the present state of Dravidian parties and politics and also the link between cinema and politics in Tamil Nadu. <laughs>